This is a quick overview of the countdown touch. For a more detailed and close up of the screen, please see other videos of this countdown touch. When you first boot up countdown touch, it will go through a boot sequence and you will arrive at this screen. I've connected a one inch display, a 25 millimeter display, so you can see approximately what's going to happen here. If I press help at the bottom, it takes you through a series of pages on screen in multiple languages so that it can tell you how to operate the product in detail. Finish help takes me directly to the screen as would continue on the boot up screen take you to here. I'm going to hit zero so that all the information here is zeroed and I'm going to input into here six minutes and I'm going to hit go. Uh, this presenter wants to have a one minute warning on amber that's one minute on there and that's it. If the presenter walks away quickly you can pause the time the next presenter wants the same time, you can hit restart and hit go. Very, very simple, straightforward, direct access. Pause the screen, I can show time of day. It's nine o'clock. Go back to the time that was on it, and if I restart this now to what the time was and hit the go, then we start counting again for a new time. This unit has four pages, so we're in this one at the moment. I'm going to hit the pause so we can go and have a look at the others. This has a up arrow for counting up. This has a memory area, so we can have four different menus, or four different memories, sorry. And we have a spanner, which is being used to show you a setup. So we can have the key click, which you can hear, help different languages, set time of day, You've got the uh, count past, past zero, which it is, and you've also got a flash at zero function as well. One last thing I want to show you is when you're in run mode, you can see that the up arrow is now being greyed out because you can't action that anymore. You can go straight to the menus and then we can go to the setup. There we go. Thank you very much. This is a user guide for the Countdown Touch Part 2. As you can see, we're using software version 3.6 and on the front screen here we've got Continue. I'll press Continue to go ahead. You've just got someone come up on a stage and you need to give them a time very, very quickly. You notice that this box here is highlighted to say it's in countdown mode. All the all the uh, uh, containers are at zero, and we can check that at zero by putting the zero button again. We can turn the screen off so that the presenter can't see what we're doing, so it doesn't confuse them. And we can add in time into here. We can put the time we want to. We're in seconds here at the moment. Not what we want. Put into minutes. Go into minutes in. So ten minutes there. We can get that running as soon as we want to. There's our time. We don't have to update the amber and red until this is running. If you want to, you can do it all together. But I'm showing that you can do this on the fly. So there's our two minute warning for that presenter that they requested. And I'm gonna put a 10 second in on red. That's it. There isn't anything else to do. It's very straightforward and simple to do. If your presenter has finished and it's gone on long enough, uh, the next presenter who comes up also wants 10 minutes. The easy thing to do is to hit the pause button and hit the reset button. That's showing then on the mirror screen that what the presenter sees now is a new 10 minute time and you can hit the go button straight away. And there we have it. If at any point during this, you want the customer, the uh, presenter wants to know what time of day is, such as he's the person before lunch and lunch is already there. You can show them the time of day. In this case, lunch is probably just about over, being it's 2 pm in the afternoon. 
take it back to time of day, take time of day off, and we're back to our time again and it's still counting in the background. Simple, straightforward, direct access all the time. If you are late with your queue, you don't have to worry about it too much. We've got this button here, it's called update. So you push the button uh, and uh, you were a minute late. So what you can do is you can take a minute off here. I'll take a minute off. It hasn't done anything else yet. Ah, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Let's put the back on again. Let's change it, change it back to minutes. Take a minute off. Take a minute off there. Hit the update button when you've got to your minute. And there we are, you've seen the minute change. If you want to give them more time, you can do that again. Hit the update button when you're ready and it will change your clock. It's a way that we can bend time for you. There you go. That is how you chat use the countdown part of the countdown touch. Hello, this is the Countdown Touch User Guide Part 3. This is how to do a count up. I'm going to go direct into continue and look at our buttons. To go into count up, we select the count up icon. That now becomes highlighted out of the four windows up there and we've got access. I'm going to reset the time on all of these so they're zero. Now we're looking at the fact that the end time should be in red or at the end time is what we're trying to adjust. So there's our five minutes on the clock. This time I've got time so I can put a, a minute of amber and it's obviously going to start at zero. What you can do with this one is if you have missed it, you can then put the time in here to say that it's going to start at a different time already because you missed it one. There we go, we can start there. And there's our stop clock, our stopwatch, our clock running uh, with a minute behind it. Now then, if your next person is going to come up to the stage, you're actually going to run, and they do actually want their full five minutes, you can cheat this while it's running and hit the minus time back to zero. So when it comes to all, you all you have to do is you hit the reset button, so they pause, so they're coming out early, they pause it, hit the reset button, and go again, and you're running in time. It's a very simple count up system that you can use on the countdown touch. Thank you. This is countdown touch user manual part four. This is all about memories and how to use the memories. Starting at the front page, go on to continue. We're using this button up here with M on. So memories, go to memories. There are four memories here. When you select a memory, you are selecting what is in these containers. You change the value of these containers to store into memory. You also use this button here to decide whether you want it to go up uh, as a down count as it is at the moment or as an up count. Let's make a new down count. So we've got a down count, it's already there. I can change this from up or down. And I want to change, the first thing I want to do is I want to change our end time. So we open the container, we select it, as you can see it's got a little round at all. And we have our little mimic screen up here pop up to tell you what time it is. So you want to give this person four minutes. Okay, so do four minutes. That's zero four zero 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 four zero zero. As you can see, four minutes. Hit the green container. Okay, four minutes is loaded. Hit the yellow container, what time do you want that one to give a wind up time to? Say one minute. So that's zero, one, zero, zero. Hit the yellow container. You want to give this person 10 seconds to wind down in red. Okay, so they've got 10 seconds to finally get off the stage. Hit the red container. That's zero, zero, one, zero. Hit the red one, close it up and that is now stored in memory three. You've gone through the sequence, it will store if you go through the entire sequence. If I select memory three, you can see it's different. If I come back to memory, uh, if I go to memory two, come back to memory three, you can see our time that we just stored there. In order to run that, you just literally select which memory you want and hit the load. The load will take you straight to the screen, put it in the right countdown, a quite count up mode, and load up the values into here, as well as on the mimic screen, all you've got to do is press go. Simple as that. 
I'll do that again. I can do this while this is counting. I can go to the memory screen. The memory screen is showing you that that count is still going ahead there. I've got another one. This has gone to memory one. Memory one has got a 10 second down count. I'm going to select that. I'm going to press the load right now. It's taken me straight there, ready to go, and I can hit the run. This is a very quick way of doing some big numbers if you want to preset them before, uh, if you've got a busy show. Use the memories, very easy way of actually making it all work. Very powerful. Thank you very much. Hello, this is the last of the user guides for the Countdown Touch to Quick User Guides. This is all about the settings function of the Countdown Touch. I'm going to go straight in on the con to continue from the front screen. And we have the spanner set up here, so I'll select the spanner. Right here we have the uh, four pages or, uh, or three pages that, that we can go back to. The Countdown, the ca Count Up and the Memory Page. Um, we've got here key click. Key click is useful, so if you want to turn off the little clicky noise, you can do. Of course, when you turn it back on, it doesn't click for the first time because it was off. You've got help, so you can go straight to the help pages and you can change the language of those help pages right here. You've got set time of day. You've got count past zero, which is solid, just like key click is at the moment, to say it is something that is in action at this moment in time. It will count past zero. And you can here you can get it to flash automatically at zero. So every time every count goes past zero, it will flash at you. Let's set up the time of day quickly here. Time of day, the first thing you're given is you can either have it in 12 or 24 hours. So if it's in 12 hours, you can select whether it's AM or AM or PM. We'll keep it in 24 hours zone. If we were on the continent, we would be an hour ahead. So let's make it 1611. So, or 1612. So let's do 1612. So that'd be 1, 6, 1, 12, 0, 0. There it is, that's our time. If I store that, there's our new time of day. Simple, straightforward. I don't think there's anything more I can tell you about this page. I think it does exactly what it says. Thank you very much. Bye bye.